Welcome to learning MoGraph for Fusion. This is going to be a quick overview to help you get going doing MoGraph in Fusion. Let's get started. So let's look at some uh, compositing. Here we go. We've got a nice little composite here, a node tree. And we've kind of built um, this colorful background with some text and some light rays and added some film grain. So right away, we're going to jump into a background node. Now, and I just wanted to highlight a couple of things, just so you can see the differences between Fusion and how Fusion works and operates. Uh, background nodes are, are, at first, the equivalent of a solid layer. In After Effects, you need to, you know, add a vignette, you make a solid, or you need to, certain things you need to do. The background node um, has a lot more features and characteristics. So we're going to add a background node. You can bring up any tool or effect just by hitting Shift Space Bar and I'm typing in a shortcut, bringing in a background. It is one of the most fastest ways of adding generators, tools, effects, and I love, I wish every program had that feature to just select something, search it, hit enter, and it drops it right in. I don't even have to leave, I don't have to go into a window, I just right inside my flow, search it, get it, and keep working. So the background um, by nature has a single a single color. You can pick any color. So this is very similar to After Effects. You can go in there and pick a color and there you go. I've got a background and you know if I want to um, you can mask it and now you've got a circle and you can make different you know effects with this. I can animate the circle make it go bouncing bouncing all that good stuff. Um, and that's pretty much standard in After, in After Effects. But Let's say that you wanted to add a, a ramp effect. Well, you'd have to go to the effects tools, add a ramp to the background. But you don't have to because you, you just did it. Inside of the background node, there's these uh, other presets that just transform this single node into multiple different versions of uh, a generator. So you basically have all the different types of generators in one node. Um, you can do a vertical ramp. You can do a four-color ramp. Uh, real quickly, if you wanted to do this four color ramp, there you go, four color ramp right here. You've got a four color ramp. Um, or if you if you wanted, you know, your full customization, you can build your own ramp style. So this is pretty standard. I can come in here and adjust and make something. Of course, what I'm making is extremely beautiful. So here we go, we've made this cool looking gradient and we can control it. We can also change this gradient uh, to a reflect, a square, cross, radial, angle, lots of cool interesting different things that are possible that um, that just make things much different. Now here's a really cool thing. I switched this to ping pong and now I can just keep animating this thing over and over and over again. You get some really cool interesting effects just constantly going. There's a lot of cool little features that you can do um, with the background. So delete that. We've got our background. I'm hitting the number one key. It's pumping it into my viewer. <clears throat> now here we go, we've taken a background, we've added some color correction. So this is the first correction, kind of giving some contrast. Second color correction, kind of made it. What have I done here? What's happening? Well, I've added these masks here. Add these masks to control what gets seen. So I've kind of added these masks in it. This controls my own custom ramp for this color corrector. Now here we go, here's our first real composite, if you will. Our first real composite. What are we compositing? Essentially we are compositing two things. Our background with 
So what does that look like? Okay, well, we're gonna load this up here. I'm gonna fit this, fit this. Hidden number two. These are the two things we want to put together. How do we do that? Well, we do that with the merge tool. Here is the merge tool. I'm gonna load this into the first viewer. So how do we do that? Well, it's a merge is a way, it's basically how you put two things together. You want to um, essentially copy and paste it. You can put two two layers together. Now it's only two layers, and I know that seems kind of weird at first, and it was weird for me. I can only composite two images together. What is that? I, that that's ridiculous. I'm going to lose data. Well, you're not going to lose data. You're not going to lose quality. Um, by doing the merge, it allows you full control later on. Later on, you want to come back and do some tweaking, do some adjustments it's really going to make it pay off nicely and be a little bit easier to do so. So what do we have going on? Well, we've got our text layer that we've animated. And here we go. We've selected this layer. It's showing us the keyframes right there. We've got some animation. Now, if you'll notice, what, what, what did we do next? We added a blur. Now, the blur is not affecting the whole image because we've got a mask that's just affecting a portion of the image. So we're only blurring a section of the image. On top of that, we've got a transform. Now, this transform, if you noticed, has moved our animation, our, our clip. So even though I have this text moving and it's got its own, you know, it's animating on the X axis, I can just add later uh, a transform node and just move it to where I need it to be and it still keeps its animation properties it's still being animated but now I've just kind of uh, reverse parenting in a way I can move it and tweak it right where I need it to be so that's kind of a cool thing and because it's coming after the blur the blur states stays locked in with it and I don't have to worry about moving my text and losing the blur effect. The blur effect stays right with it. It's not going anywhere. Um, all right, so what have we done? We've taken the transform. We've added some rays. These are the rays we've added. Got a rays uh, plugin. And then what do we do to the rays? Well, we output the rays by themselves to a brightness. And I've masked out this brightness node with a fast noise. Uh, again, a fast noise is exactly what, you know, what it looks like. It's fractal noise for After Effects. Uh, you've got a lot of control inside of Fusion for fast noise. Um, I will admit, though, that After Effects comes with a nice handful of presets that kind of helps you get started and give you some cool, interesting maps. Fusion, you know, you're going to have to build those to get those different types of maps. It, it is possible. It will take several more steps to do so. Uh, so that's kind of thing that's a, like a, a bummer. But for the most part, jumping right in, it's pretty quick and it's pretty easy. In a lot of ways, fast noise is a little bit easier to use than the actual fractal noise in, in After Effects. Just a little bit. So I'm using this as a mat. I'm using it as an actual mat to control my rays. Then I'm merging this, these rays back on top, back on top. So I've gone out from this one transform node, I've gone out, added rays, adjusted the rays, and I'm putting back on top of itself with the merge tool. And now I've got my rays kind of flickering and moving, and they're not just static ugly rays that you kind of have a little life uh, into them. Then I took that merge and I took the output of it and I put it on top of our background. So that's our background. This is our, our, our merge and together now we've got our text over our background and we've just done a composite just added two things together um, <laughs> and so if you're coming from After Effects you're like well that's just you know essentially two layers inside of a timeline just 
one on top of each other. Yes, it is, but the control that you get out of this is pretty phenomenal later on, coming back to adjust this. It's a lot of control that I have that you would kind of get into a tangled mess with After Effects. But that's our first composite. And then on top of our composite, we've added a soft glow. And we've added some film grain. And that's essentially um, how you composite, just by keep going down and creating new pipes and new uh, pathways and just adding and adding. And at any point in time, you want to come in here and, and adjust a certain flow. Just bring it out, add new elements, and, you, and you're good to go. Real quick, I know we're running out of time, but you notice here I've selected this text node, and i got these two little green lines. That's telling me that I've got some keyframes. I can see that in the timeline. I've got this parameter selected. Here's all my layers. And you, this layer view can get really, really cluttered quickly. So uh, one of the cool things, you hit the selected button. Whatever, whatever node you have selected in the flow just shows that node. So right away, you know exactly what you're looking at. You don't have to try to go and hunt it down. Boom, it's right there. Well, there we go. There's my keyframes. I've got a keyframe at 0 and a keyframe at 10. Now, I can select these keyframes. I can move them, put them wherever I want to. Uh, I can select them individually, move them individually. Uh, you know, all pretty much standard stuff. But here's the cool stuff comes in in the spline editor. Now, this, like I said, is one of the most powerful curve editors out there. I really, really, really like it. It's got a lot of cool features. Way too many features to even think about talking about now. But it's got full control over your spline. I can come in and adjust just that axis the way I want to adjust it, which is really great. One really cool thing. Let's say that I kind of build this animation right there, right? For whatever reason, that's my animation. I love it. I like it. I can hit the Shift S and I smooth it up, those keyframes out. I'm going to select these two keyframes here and you can actually hit Duplicate. Now see what I've done there? I've duplicated just the keyframes that I've selected. Or I can select, I can just deselect everything. Or actually select these three and hit loop and it's going to loop those that I've selected. Pretty powerful. I can ping pong them out. I can repeat them out. So it's got right away just cool features that uh, you know, you have to kind of know what you're doing in After Effects to have that. I can right click on these, and let's say I don't want it to go infinitely out. But maybe I only want it to do that. Boom, there you go. I've duplicated that set of keyframes three times. Now, let's say that, for example, I want to taper those. Well, I come over here to my bounding box, select them. Now I can actually bring this down all the way and taper this whole animation. Or now it builds and tapers. I'm going to select these keyframes here, Shift S, kind of smooth those out. Shift. Let's see here. L, Shift S. Boom, there we go. Now I've got this animation that tapers down really nicely. Now, I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what we're creating there. It looks kind of ugly, but you get the idea. A lot of cool, powerful things. There are so many interesting little tricks. Uh, that you can use inside this blind editor that just gives you ultimate control. Really, really love it. Still learning a lot on it. One of the cool things that I like about Fusion 2 is this ability right in here. You saw this with uh, this first thing here. Let's look at the text tool. I've got my text. I've got this little S1 through S6. It's basically just a way of versioning. For whatever reason you decide I don't like what I'm doing or I want to try something different. Uh, I would like to try a different color. Boom. There you go. Oh, I got a different color. There we go. It's all it is is just like uh, you just paused it and, and now you're at version two. So if you think of this as version one, version two. If you're coming from from Resolve, this will make a lot of sense to you, but basically every node has a different versioning system. So if you want to try something and you don't want to have to copy and paste and recreate a whole new pipeline. You don't have to. You don't have to copy and paste your layers and you know turn off this layer just to make a new effect and all these things, yada, yada, yada. It gets kind of you know, a, a lot. Well, don't just select a new one and adjust. You adjust away. There we go. You know what? I'm going to go back to the beginning. There's the beginning right then and there, just like that. We didn't get too much into animating. But hopefully we got into just kind of the 
um, the mindset of fusion and what it takes. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, there's still things I need to learn, there's still things that frustrate me, but I definitely am able to use it without needing After Effects. So I can't wait to see what Blackmagic has in store for the upcoming versions, just looking at what they did for Resolve and how they've streamlined it and made it better, made it just really, really brought it to um, a good place. And I can't wait for them to do that to Fusion. So thank you there guys. Is. Um, Thanks for watching. We'll come back in another tutorial, get a little deeper into compositing and adding multiple effects. Remember, take what you learned and make it better.